Hey everyone, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. We're talking about adding and subtracting rational expressions, right? So if I look at this, the first thing that should pop into my head is adding or subtracting fractions, right? When we add or subtract fractions, the first step we need to do is figure out the common denominator. But now before I do that with the rational expressions, my first step is actually going to be factor the denominators. Right, because looking at these two, if I just multiplied both of these by each other, I'm going to end up with this really, really big um, factoring and fa all these x's everywhere. So I don't want to do that. My best option is to factor. So the first denominator, I can't factor it, right? It's just x squared, meaning it stays exactly the same. The second expression, however, right, I'm only looking at the denominator again, so I'm going to write this over here in this corner. And my uh, greatest common factor between both of them, remember, that's the um, number or the variable that can I, can I can divide both of these factors by, and that one is actually x. Right? If I divide both of these by x, that's going to leave me with just an x plus 1. Okay, so now that I've gotten this new factor, I'm going to rewrite my problem. So x squared plus 4x plus 2 divided by x squared plus x squared. Now I'm going to write in this new denominator x, x plus 1. All right, now my next step is to get the least common denominator. So if you check your notes, you'll see that least common denominator, right? That's what we use when we add or subtract fractions. Basically, what can I multiply both of these fractions by, or these rational expressions by, so that I can get the exact same denominator, and then I can actually do my multiplication, or actually my addition or my subtraction, okay? So this first denominator, what I'm missing is that x plus 1, right? Remember, I can't go backwards. So if that's an x squared, I cannot take it back, okay? So I just have to multiply both of these by x plus 1, which would give me, and I'm going to rewrite this first one just so when I go over to that second expression, you can see how it's going to happen. So I'm going to have an x plus 1 times x squared plus 4x plus 2. I'm not going to worry about the multiplication from the top just yet. But now I'm going to have an x squared times an x plus 1, right? So now both of these have that x plus 1, but now the second one is missing an x squared. So how do I do that? Well, all I need to do is multiply by x. So you see, multiplying by an x or an x plus 1 is much easier than multiplying one equation by x squared plus x and the other one by an x squared. Um, could I have done that? Sure. But I, I didn't really need to. Okay, so here I'm going to do the multiplication for the numerator because it's very easy. Remember, all I have to do is add my exponents. Okay, so this is 2 plus 1, so this is going to give me an x cubed over x squared x plus 1. So now I have the same denominators. Now I can actually do my, um, I don't want to have to say do the math, but I'm going to go ahead and add or subtract. Well, technically I need to multiply first. So multiply numerator, or numerators really, it just so happened that that one was easy enough to do that I didn't waste time um, not multiplying it. So this first one, this is a binomial by a trinomial, meaning I have to multiply each term by x and each term by 1. So really quickly, I'm going to do, do that work here on the side. And that's going to give me x times x squared plus x times 4x 
plus x times 2. And then I'm trying to <laughs> fit it all in on one side. Everything in the second batch is multiplied by a plus 1, meaning it's going to be exactly the same. So I'm not going to bother write, writing 1 times x squared, 1 times 4x. I'm just going to write it as x squared plus 4x plus 2. Right? Now I'm going to do my multiplication over here. So x times an x squared is an x cubed. x times a 4x is a 4x squared. x times 2x is just plus 2x. And then again, x squared plus 4x plus 2. Now I have to combine my like terms. So there's no other x cubed. So I'm actually going to write it over here, so x cubed, that's a bit too big, there we go, plus, now I have 4x squared and a 1x squared, which is going to be 5x squared, then I'm going to have 2x squared plus 4x squared, which is a plus 6x, and then 2 is by itself, so a plus 2. All of this over x squared, x plus 1. And then right here at the end, it's going to be that plus x cubed, x squared, x plus 1. Okay. Now my last step is now this is going to be add or subtract. Right. So in this case, I have a 1x cubed plus another 1x cubed, that's my only addition that's happening, which is going to leave me with 2x cubed plus 5x squared plus 6x plus 2, and all of this over that x squared x plus 1. And that's it. This is my final answer, okay? That's all there, there is to it. You cannot simplify it anymore. This is it. Okay, so it's very straightforward. It's very similar to what we know um, when it comes to adding and subtracting uh, fractions. I'm going to do another example, right? This was the addition. I'm now going to go ahead and do a subtraction problem. Okay, so I'm, again, I'm going to have my steps here on the side. I'm going to have my problem, which is going to be, this case, 2x squared over x squared minus 5x minus x squared plus 3x minus 4 over x squared. Now, again, my first step is to factor the denominators. Okay, so again, I can't really factor that x squared. Usually if I have just one factor in the denominator, I'm not going to be able to do anything with it. Okay, but in this case, over here, I have that x squared minus 5x. So again, I'm going to work it out here on the side. Now the, num the term that they have in common is that x. So it's going to be x minus 5. Remember when I divide by a variable, I'm canceling them out, and this will actually go from 2 to 1. Okay, so now my new problem is 2x squared over x, x minus 5 minus x squared plus 3x minus 4 over x squared. Okay, now what color did I have my second step? I think it was blue which is to get the least common denominator. So remember, in, most of the time in a rational expression, you're always going to have to multiply both fractions or both expressions, okay? It, it's just how it usually works. You know, when there's an x involved, it's not as simple as if it were 5 and 20, right? So my least common denominator, this first one, I'm going to have to multiply again by an x over an x, right, because I'm going to want to have that x squared. And over here, 
I have to multiply by x minus 5 over x minus 5. And once again, I'm going to do my 2x squared times an x. All I'm doing is adding those exponents. This is a 1, so it's 2x cubed over x squared x minus 5. And that's going to be subtracting. And now once again, I have my x squared x minus 5 in the denominator over here. And I have x squared plus 3x minus 4 times x minus 5. Now I'm going to go ahead and multiply the numerators. So like the last time, I already did the first one, so now I just need to focus on the second one, okay? Now it's going to be, I'm going to work it out over here on this side, x squared and just like before, multiplying every term by x and every term by 5. Now this case isn't going to be as easy because it's not a 1, it is a 5, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of extra work, but that's okay. So it's going to be x squared times x plus 3x times x minus 4 times x. I'm going to kind of do this multiplication first before I worry about that x minus 5 just because I don't have too much room. So this is going to become an x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x. And then my other multiplication is going to be negative 5 times x squared, negative 5 times 3x. Oh, I'm running out of room. Negative 5 times 4, times negative 4 actually, it's kind of hard to see there, but you'll see when I move this over now. So x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x, this becomes a negative 5x squared, right, negative 15x, and a negative and a negative give me a positive 20, okay? Now I have to combine my like terms. So I'm going to already write this out here and write my like terms in the expression I'm trying to solve. So that way I, I save a little bit of time and some space. So x cubed, there's nothing involved, right? So it stays as the x cubed. Then I have, I'm going to use my highlighter. I have 3x squared and a negative 5x squared. So if I were to combine those two, I end up with a negative 2x squared. Right? Then I'm going to look at my x's, which it's a little hard to see with that pink highlighter, but I have a negative 4 and a negative 15. So remember that's just the same as adding them, but I keep my negative sign. So 15 plus 4 is 19x. And then my last 20 has nothing in common, so I actually don't even need to highlight anything else. 20 just hangs out there at the end, okay? And now my last step, which was add or subtract. So in this case, we are subtracting. So now I have a 2x cubed minus a 1x cubed, right? That's the only thing that's combining here. So 2 minus 1 is just x cubed minus 2x squared minus 19x. Or actually, no, because remember, we're doing this negative. So this negative is actually going to change it. So if this was a negative 2x, it is now becoming a positive 2x. Because the way you got to think of it is this is 2x cubed, right? It combines. And then remember when we did that synthetic division and all that stuff, we would put in that 0. So if you do the same thing, if I'm looking at that 2x squared, I'm doing 0 minus negative 2x squared, right? 0 minus negative 2x squared. 0 minus negative 19x. 0 minus 20. 
okay? That's the way you should be thinking it because now I get a positive 2x squared, right? Because a negative and a negative, I'll do it in the highlighter, they give me a positive. Negative and a negative give me a positive. And that 20 that was positive already now becomes a negative 20. I put that over, x squared, x minus 5, and I am done with that problem as well. Okay, so there's nothing really too complicated about doing this problems. Um, I'm going to give you now your practice problems that you should be doing for the time being. Um, so the first one is going to be negative x squared plus 1 over 1 minus x squared. And the second one is going to be 1 over 2 minus x minus x squared over 4 minus x squared. Now in this problem here, be very careful. Notice how it is 2 minus x and 4 minus x squared. That's very important, okay? Remember the order, all right? Um, but with that, you guys can should be working on these problems. They will be due at the end of class, and you can ask me any questions if we finish a little early. So good luck.